happened, dog? That old work pie. I need that old work pie, cuz. I need that old work pie when it's dropping, cuz. <laughs> this is episode 58 of the Off Work Podcast, dog. I don't even know if I remember how to pod. I, I've been gone for way too long, bro. I don't even know if I remember how to do it, bro. But in the wake of my absence, a lot of things been going down. Shout out to Kwame Brown. This is episode 58 is dedicated to you, Kwame. No, oh, man. No, we're podcast. not. No, no. Come on. No. <laughs> we're not dedicating nothing to Kwame Brown, dog. I love him, dog. Let's be, <laughs> let's be real, dog. <laughs> he was forgot about. But now he made his, he made his presence known now. So we, yeah, we it's a nut. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I don't get it. Kwame Brown said these boys ain't got land, dog. He said, if you don't have land, you can't talk to him. Straight up. I mean, no, the thing I feel, I feel Kwame, though, when he was saying that I put my mom on the golf course at 18. I still don't understand what that shit means, but it sounds dope. <laughs> he was probably, he was trying to say, like, she, she was in a lot nice neighborhood, like, like, leveled her up, basically. Yeah. But I don't know if he was out there really golfing with his I don't mom. like the way Kwame talks shit either. I don't I like, like, I don't like. It. My mama's cooking. My mama's teasing <laughs> on that ass. Bro, he calling people punks and stuff, dog. It's not the, <laughs> it's not the 70s, dog. Like, <laughs> dog, calling people a punk. Like, uh, okay. I, uh, he be calling him boy. Boy. Yeah, hey, you talking Where's to Kwame Brown now, from? Boy. Where's he from? He's from Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. Okay. The same Country bumpkin. Country bumpkin. Yeah, we get it. Hey, He's talking shit in a suit and a cowboy hat. I can't take you seriously. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> I just can't. He looked like a car salesman, dog, like from the South, dog. Can't, can't take you seriously. And the next episode, I'm, I'm wearing my Kwame Brown merch. I'm going to buy it, bro. Got to do it. He has merch? Yeah. I respect that. Respect hey, the get, hustle. Get you the, get you the Kwame uh, jersey. Get you the Kwame Brown jersey. I've been looking for it. Get you a yeah, you gonna keep, you gonna keep looking. <laughs> get you get you a Sixers one, dog. I might. You gonna have to Nike ID that joint. That shit you can't buy that shit in stock. <laughs> Ain't no way. I think he now might, it might be. He might be able to find a Wizards one. Yeah, goodwill, nigga. Good luck. Want <laughs> <laughs> me Brown jersey, dog? Yeah, right. Hey, how was y'all's weekend? Duh. It was straight. It's good, dog. Yeah. Hey, man, shout out to us, dog. We went 57 consecutive weeks with episode. And that, that was our last week, our first week off, bro. First week yeah, off. It was second, but. There's two? We took off Thanksgiving. No, no, we record Thanksgiving. Don't do that. No, yeah, we, we did. We did. Yeah, we, we did record week Thanksgiving. Off. No, no, but we didn't we release it. Thanksgiving <laughs> week, we didn't release the episode. Still recorded. That, that counts yeah. to me. It counts. It counts. It, but if the fans don't get an episode, then it don't count. I mean, I guess. I guess. But yeah, I mean, it was a much needed break off, though. It was a much needed break off. You know, everybody's talking about recently talking about mental health and things like that. And I don't think it necessarily, it kind of will, it may apply to us, you know, I guess, in, especially in our personal lives. But, um, you know, it was a really good week off. I got some time to spend with the kids at the beach. I know Jarvis is on vacation. I think Drew, you thanks, thanks for the invite again, by the way. Drew, appreciate hey, you. Man. Hey, that was a spur of the moment thing, man. No. Was, <laughs> Jar- it was. It was. No, he, don't, boy, he don't. He don't really fuck with me, dog. He don't really fuck with me, Jarrell. That's no, crazy. I, I had a conversation with my parents about that. Actually, we was in Hawaii. Was, how, how was Jarrell doing? And I was like, I don't know. Jarrell been acting kind of, I'm gonna say funny, but a little different. I don't know what's going on with Jarrell. My dad. Hey, look, was, I mean, I talked to Jarrell about for an hour. He sounded good to me. He said, I think my dad said when he talked to you. That's his first time, I guess, talking to you because you you grew up with my dad. Yeah, he said that's the first like extensive conversation he had with you on on a man to man level. Yeah, so, um, I don't know what y'all talked about, but he he, he enjoyed it. Yeah, He's yeah, still, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think, I uh, think the thing is, bro, is like I don't really plan. Like I'm starting to get older now, and I don't really plan a lot of stuff, bro. And I'm just doing stuff at the spur of the moment, bro. So when it comes to doing stuff with my kids, it's not like I'm planning it and being like, "Yo, yeah. I'm 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 taking my kids to the beach." I just go and do it, bro. That's the yeah, when I whoop that ass, it's gonna be spur of the moment too, nigga. How about that? <laughs> Fuck out of here, spur of the moment. You can text spur of the moment too, can't you? I mean, yeah, you're right. I can. All right, I can. Damn, y'all don't, don't wow. worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, oh yeah. Shout out, shout out to my Sixers. Y'all know the vibes. Your sister? Oh yeah, it's the NBA edition. Y'all know about? 
Huh? You said shout out to your sister. You got a sister? My, I said my know. sixes, boy, but nah, just Drew got a sister you don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody popping up with sisters, dog. Oh, yeah, hey, it's sisters, the NBA yeah, that, edition that, that, of the pod, dog. You said what? It's the NBA edition of the pod. Yeah. Oh, come on, River City, baby. Hey, look y'all's team. We playoffs, dog. Let's get nah, it. Nah, 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 nah. I don't think what? your team. I don't think your team made it, my boy. I don't think. Playing. We used them playing. You know. That's all right. Hey, but I, I, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This, this year's playoffs is, is you know, already starting off, you know, with some good excitement, with especially with that Knicks and Hawks yeah. series. It's wide like, open, bro. It's wide open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Like I said, I, it's, I think there's a potential upset, and you know. I, I wouldn't really call it an upset, but, you know, with the Suns and, and the Lakers, you know, if Chris Paul can stay healthy and obviously with Luka and the Mavs against the Clippers and, um, you know, we see what's going on in the East with, like I said, the Knicks and the Hawks and um, <clears throat> the Sixers and Sixers and Wizards. And like I said, some, some really good playoff series that are going on. Denver and and Denver and, uh, and Portland, um, some really good, some really good uh, series going on. I'll be, I'll be, I'll keep it a beam with you. I think that the Sixers have the best opportunity in the East to beat the Nets. I, I, I only want to see the Nets face the Sixers in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's yeah. if the Nets play anyone else, I think it's a wrap. To be real, well, I, the only one that can challenge them. I think, I think the Nets are going to be challenged next round by the by the Bucks. If I'm, if I'm being honest with oh, you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They are going to be really good series next round by the Bucks. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I think I think if we you know we when that, we play the winner of the Hawks uh, Knicks series, and we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, I think I think we'll make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. We'll see what happens. And my boy compared the Knicks to the Waterburger menu. He was like, nothing too fat, nothing too flashy, you know, <laughs> nothing too crazy, but it, it gets the job done. Hey, the Knicks are a very solid team, though. They have a lot of really good role players with Reggie Bullock, um, Alec Burke. Yeah. They got a lot of vets too, vet leadership. Yeah, uh, yeah, Derrick Rose. One I mean, star away. If you, if you yeah. and I hate to say this, if you put Lillard, Julius Randle, yeah. on the Knicks, that's a championship. You said who? Dame Lillard on the Knicks. That's a championship team right there. I hate to say it. Or yeah. contender. I mean, if you put, to be honest with you, if you put any you know other valuable all star on the Knicks, because I mean they already have Julius yeah. Randle, who's an all star this year. If you put any other valuable all star on that team, they're competing for a championship. Yeah. Except so, for Westbrook, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I don't know what's up with Westbrook, bro. Like literally, the, the same Sixers, thing that's always been up with him. What do you mean? The Sixers forced him literally yesterday. I was watching the game. The Sixers literally forced him to shoot the ball the entire game, bro. And it was brick after brick after brick after brick. Bruh, he's been the same player his whole career. I, he might be the most overrated player in the NBA. I'm not no bullshit. So do you really think he's he's stats he's a, a stat pattern? Yeah, he just he just uses more energy than all them rebounds, dog. He's just <clears throat> more energy than other players. Going after all these rebounds, I get it, but it's it's it's, it's for not what? easy to do though. I think a lot of people. They I'm not struggle. saying it's. I'm not saying it's easy. His talent is there. Yeah. But he's not a winner. He's not going to yeah. lead a team to a to anything. Yeah, I think, always, I, 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 I think that's always. I think that's always been bro. I think that's. He's I a mean, turnover. Yeah. He, he turns the ball over way too much. Like he's just not. He doesn't. He's not going to lead a team like that. That's fair. I think, I think. I think what he might provide like later on in his career is like that bench presence with the second unit and going out there yeah. and like and like Lou Will and, like just get in there and get buckets. We don't need you to do nothing else. And I know I know that sounds disrespectful based on his he's an MVP, former MVP player and he's, you know, leads in NBA history in triple doubles. It sounds real disrespectful, but I think that's go- that's going to be his niche to win a championship. To be real with you. He's not a leader of men. Damn. Damn. Keeping it real with y'all, dog. He's not. I mean, but like I said, the Wizards have a good young core, though. You like I said with him and Bill, and I think you know that's they have something to build around. You know, for the young future. young core. Yeah. So you they got Hachimura. He's Bill all right. They got, yeah, they got Hachimura. I mean, they have a young okay. core. Yeah, they. They like said him and Bill are part of the young core. I'm like, no, nah, they they're in win now mode. I mean, well, yeah, Bill's in win now mode, but but I mean, if you think about it, and in, in terms of you know long term, they're young. They're still relatively young. <laughs> Yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Westbrook is probably about what getting 28, 29, getting his up, upper 30s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our age, dog. You got to be in his 30s. Nah. Really? You got to be. Name is about 31. Yeah. Steph is 33. Or, no, Steph oh, is 34. Damn, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. 33. Steph is older. Yeah, Steph is older. Yeah. He played at Davidson until his junior year. Westbrook's definitely in his 30s. Has to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then never mind. Yeah, they might be right. They I mean, might. Be we, right. Got, we got Google. Oh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, man. 
we'll see. We'll see what happens. I know my Sixers, like I said, I'm very proud of them boys. And B is definitely an MVP candidate, man. Do the MV um, celebration if you're really a Sixers fan. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Westbrook is 32. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely in win now mode. Hey, so I don't know if y'all talked about last podcast, but y- y'all talk about J. Cole, the album? Nah, we ain't even get into we, that. We ain't review it yet. We ain't, we ain't review it yet, dog. Dog. Like, I, I feel like the first week I heard it, I was in a different headspace. I was just like, just consumed with work, and I really couldn't focus on it. And I wasn't working out. But I played that joint in the gym a few days ago, and like, every day I play it, bro. That My Life with Moray in 21. Oh, yeah. That, that, hook, right there, that hook is like. Hey, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, y'all, y'all no, to- no, no, because in the group chat, you was talking shit about the album, saying, I don't see anything special in it. No, I, I said it's overrated. I stand by that. It's overrated. Please tell me how. I think, I think it's hard, bro. I think every track. The album is different. overrated to me. Okay, tell, tell me how it's overrated in your opinion, in your humble opinion. Me personally, I only like half of the tracks, okay? That's me personally. A lot of the beats was not good to me. Like on the latter half, like some of the beats, they were just like, uh, it was like lackluster beats to me on the second half of it. For and like, but I that's get, to be expected with a Cole album. Okay, that doesn't mean we just that doesn't mean we're just okay with it. You have to deduct points for that. Still, it doesn't matter if he's known for that. So would the you rather? All right. So would you rather have good production and subpar rapping, or or a subpar production and good rapping? I'm a Nas fan, so you know subpar production and good rapping for me. I mean, a yeah. lot, a, a lot of hip hop fans would be okay with the subpar yeah. production. That's fine, I, I but think, for I me, it depends on the mood. It depends on the mood and it depends on the artist. Like, but that's true. Like I'm I said, and it also, but that comes also, with Cole. We expect Cole to rap. I get it, and he and the rapping was phenomenal. I gave y'all that. The f- rapping is phenomenal. You can't say nothing bad about the rapping. But for me, there's more to songs than just rapping. There's the beat. There's the hook. A lot of his hooks was trash. He gave you some fire on the first track, 95 South. Okay, that was one of the songs I liked. But on a lot of the songs, the hooks were trash. The beat were not good. Even the song with Lil Baby, I can't even really listen to it because the hook Yo, is trash. Yo, are you crazy, Drew? You are wild right now. The hook bro. is trash. The hook is trash. Yo, you are yo, you are crazy right now. The hook now. is trash, dog. I, I'm giving it to be real. And I think yo, we he's wild. That's me. weak. That's hard. That, that beat is hard. Everything's hard. Hey. Don't like it. I just don't like it. Lil Baby is the only part about that ch- song I like. They both got off though to me. I only like Lil, the way Lil Baby rode the beat. But it was better than Cole to me on that song. That's just that. me. As, as far as like the the you talking about as far as the flow on it? Yeah, like he he fit, it, he fit that beat more than Cole did for me. He's a problem, dog. But Lil I Baby get it. I, oh, of course. Yeah, Lil but Baby for me, man. I think it was overrated. People saying it's instant classic. People saying like it's just I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I, a lot of people are saying are saying that, and I Joe get Budden, that. Joe, Joe Budden said on his podcast is a classic. Yeah. And I get we say that a lot when, when the big artists drop a lot of the time. So I understand it. But for me, it was just overrated. It's a solid project. To me, it's not better than Forest Hill Drive. It's not better than KOD, to me. That's so. because, you, that's like I said, I think that's more so of a preference thing for you. You're the, you're the type of yeah. guy who likes commercial commercial tracks. I'm saying right Would now, you say this is better than Forest Hill Drive? No. Uh, but it has the potential no. to be. I don't, I don't know. Think. I don't, I don't know. Think so. To be honest with you, it hasn't been out long enough for me to be able to judge it to be better and, than Forest Hills Drive. And I'll be real with you, dog. The thing that messed up Forest Hills Drive to me is they played those songs out on the radio so fucking much, dog. I got played out to the point where I can't even enjoy the album anymore because every song that damn album, oh, man, so much radio play, dog. That's, that's I a, still that's love a, role models. You don't love role models? I still love that shit. Yeah. It's, smash. He has smash hits on that album. Like yeah. So I was like, and like what January twenty eighth? Like they played that one out too. Yeah, wet dreams. I mean, that was like one of them. I was like, my shit. That's the but... that's the only song on the album I didn't like actually. But wet dreams. Shit was corny, corny as hell. <laughs> corny dog. Don't want to hear about it. Like I said, I, I I think I think Cole's album was a very very solid project. Um, I I'm gonna pump the brakes on 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 instant classic because of the fact that it hasn't been out long enough, and I like for for music just to be out and to see if it it stands the test of time. <clears throat> you know, over the course of, you know what I'm saying, a few years. But 
I definitely I wish Javel because Javel has yet to comment on the Cole album, Jarvis. Have you noticed that? He's been quiet. He's been quiet for him. Let me see. He's like been this. he's been very quiet, and he's been very quiet as well as the J Cole the uh the leakers uh freestyle too in uh, in L A. Oh yeah, that so, was tough. Um, like I said, I'm I'm just standing pat right now. I'm gonna stand firm on it, and I, like I said, I'm just gonna say that say that it's a, a very very good project, and you know we'll see what happens in the next year or two. We'll see what you know accolades he picks up off of it. And to be real, J, J. Cole. He really hasn't missed, with the exception of Sideline Story. And I wasn't. Yeah. I like Sideline Story. <laughs> well, Sideline Story was was more so the warm up. But I mean, Sideline Story was coming off the hills of his mixtape run. And that's yeah. at a time where a lot of artists, I was basically thinking I was going to get the mixtape, Cole, and it was like the album trying to do commercial. For me, I think Born Center was his miss for me. I love Born Center. That's a good album. Is that it? Hold on. Is Born Center? Yeah, Born Center is the second album. Land of Snakes. Y'all know yeah. that. <laughs> that album is that's a good, bro. That's a good album, bro. It's not. I mean, I, I I know I know people really don't fuck with that album because of the fact that just like they'll say about the production aspect of it, but he was actually written on that album. But I can understand why people don't like it because it does sound boring. That album does sound boring. No, the album that sounds boring that I like that everyone says boring is uh for your, for your eyes, eyes only. only. I yeah, love that I can, album, dog. Yeah. I like people, that album. People too. like people like conveniently forget about that album. It's like the Nas Nostradamus, like yeah, like, whatever. Like, and most yeah. people don't talk about. I mean, I know it's a mixtape too, but people don't talk about Truly Yours and Truly Yours Truly, too. No, I combine. I I'm, about, I'm about to nerd out real quick. I combine <laughs> Truly Yours one and two and make it one album, and that's a classic to me. Yeah, that shit is that shit is fire. I've been waiting for Truly Yours three to come out for years. Yeah, bro, like that shit is fire. I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, Cole. Big ups to Cole. Hey, Drew, certified lover boy, got to live up to expectation. We're gonna see. So, so time out with this album. He right? dropped. He dropped a snippet that was fire. Before we and go shout out Drake. to Drake. Hey, shout out to Drake too. Time out. First of the decade. Drake. Before we, we about to get on Drake. Before we get yeah. to Drake though, I'm about to say something, bro. With with Cole's come up, warm up, Friday Night Lights, um, for truly, Drive, truly yours, truly yours too. The truly yours one and two, and this album. It's safe to say he's top ten now. That's that's just on. Thank but you. you put top, ten, all, top ten all time. Yeah, you can definitely argue that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you, Jarvis. But, Thank you. Thank you. I hate to say it. I'll take. Damn that that good kid, Mad City is such a classic. But do you, do you put Cole? That album is better than every Cole project. I mean, I could agree with that. But do you put Cole ahead of Kendrick all time? I mean, volume wise, you may have to. You're gonna have to, yeah. Cause I mean, Cole, if I mean Kendrick has only dropped what three albums? Section eighty. We don't count. Section that. eight. <clears throat> Section eighty. Good kid. Uh, good kid. To pimp a butterfly. Oh, and damn. 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 Oh, four. Yeah. Yeah. And then the unreleased joint. If y'all want to count that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't count, I don't count that shit. Those are just oh. drops from to pimp a, to pimp a butterfly. But Cole's mixtape run was phenomenal, oh, yeah. bro. For sure. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, and but don't. I mean, let's not get it twisted. Kendrick had a nice little, little mixtape run as well. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't privy. Yeah, I mean, I, I've listened to a few of them. It wasn't. I mean, it was cool. It was cool, but uh, I'm t- I'm taking Cole. And then again, I could be biased, but I'm taking Cole's, you know, uh, discography over over Kendrick's. So and that's no shot at Kendrick because I love Kendrick too. Like I love the like I know some people like didn't like the Black Panther album, but I love that shit. I'm I'm ready for Kendrick's next album, and then segue to what we talk about: Certified Lover Boy. Yeah, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for that too. Now that Cole was the first of the the big three to drop something new, yeah, I'm anticipating what the other two are going to do to follow up with that. But it's yeah. usually Cole is in their shadows. It's like right. kind of like an afterthought in comparison to Drake and Kendrick. But now it's like they got to step up to you know be on that you know to sustain that level where Cole's at now. So right, I think it's a healthy competition, bro. Well, I think I think also. I think we need to have the conversation because I think uh, I think it was Jarvis who sent the post. Oh, it was Jarvis, yeah. The Mount Rushmore? Yeah, the Mount Rushmore. And I think it had what it had, Drake, Kendrick, and Cole on it, and then it's missing that fourth that fourth head post. For, de- for the 2010 decade, 2010s. <clears throat> yeah, the 2010s. So who who would y'all roll with? Brent, you know Brandon going to say future. Yeah. And that's an argument to be made. Right. For me, it's only two options. It's either Kanye or future for me. I don't think it can be – it really, why really, can it not really, be Hove? Why can we not put Hove there? So what came out? What did he have? Yeah, he, he had the car, the Carters. 
Blueprint three. The Carters Blueprint three. In 2010. What? 2012. Magna Carta. Magna Carta, right? Holy Grail. Magna Carta, yeah. Holy, Holy Grail. Yeah. Magna Carta, Holy Grail. 444. Watch the Thrones. The the Carter. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Why why is Jay Z not in this conversation? I guess because he like like Brando says he's already home. <laughs> but all these artists are. So you're saying more so because of his longevity, he shouldn't be able to be had in this. Con- he he he's shouldn't be in this conversation. Okay, I mean that's fair. He are, I'll, I'll, put like, I'll put it like this. He was already in a previous Mount Rushmore. Out, yeah. So, so, yeah, like okay. So would y'all in, throw in 2010? He was already in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Now I did. Now I did see some people that put on in the comment section that they said they would put Travis Scott in there. Nah, nah, nah. not enough. I mean, it's 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 not it's not about, a terrible the young the young um, generation. Yeah, uh, I mean it's. Like I mean, an argument can, an argument can yeah. be can be had between uh, Travis Scott and Future. That is a very valid argument. An argument can be had. That's true. I guess you could argue it. I can't. I can't. You can't argue because who you can You're not gonna put Travis Scott over Kanye. No, I don't think so. Because my, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. But Travis. But my Scott, beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Huh? Is that the? Is that the? Album yeah, that's the one. Scott? Yeah, Travis Scott wrote on that. <laughs> it don't matter. It doesn't at all. Let's, <laughs> this is one of the best albums of all time. I don't care. I don't care who's on it. Don't care who wrote on it. Don't care nothing. It's, it's the best album of all time to me. I mean, it's my, it's my favorite album of all time, bro. And y'all, y'all know I love Ready to Die, but like that album is just a like. What about Get Rich or Die Trying? No, that album is musically just. I mean, between album. my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and Watch the Throne for Ye, it's <laughs> it's kind of hard to go up against. Just yeah. those two alone. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Like the production on my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasies is yeah, exquisite. Somebody, somebody. What did Jarrell do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, it's like Van Gogh, I never dude. did that, by the way. I never did that. It's fucking art, man. <laughs> fucking art. I dude. did. I did say it was art, but I never kissed my hand. <laughs> <It was> like... <laughs> Jarvis is wild right now. Yo, so I got a question for y'all. So I saw this on um. IG the other day. So I'm gonna read. It says I've been dating this guy long distance for almost two years. I live in Canada and he lives in the US. We met through Facebook. We haven't met because of COVID restrictions and other things. We finally came to Ethiopia for Easter to meet up and see if that would help our relationship. We met up twice and we tried to talk, but I could see he didn't want it anymore. His whole entire vibe was different. But he never said let's break up. A week passed after that, and I saw a picture of him at his wedding. His friend shared it on Instagram, congratulating him. I know relationship's done, and I want to do anything to him, but should I tell his wife, inform her about the, our situation? Mm. So, a lot of people say that if you're not married, you're single. Right? So, yeah. technically... I mean, all the old school players, if you ask our pops, you know what they're going to say. Now, me... <laughs> I didn't play like once I'm in a committed relationship, I commit to my partner. That's it. I'm not talking to anyone else. Once we decide that we're exclusive. Right. So my thing is technically he was single and it's, she got her feelings hurt because she saw him on Instagram. So you think she's well within her right to tell his wife or should it just be water on the bridge? I mean, I think it's more so a question we should ask, like a one, like a if we had like a a, feet, a woman. I mean, yeah. I think for me, I think you can't. I think it's personal preference, but I I don't think you can be mad either way. Like if she tells him, I mean, if she tells the wife, like you can't be mad at that. Like she's well within her right, I would say, to tell the wife. If you were dealing with someone for two years and he never told you, like I feel like, I feel like you owed a little bit more. Then if it was just like that. a, that's then if it was just, like, if it's just like a one night stand type of thing, and like you didn't, you didn't really talk, you didn't really know him, you didn't really talk to him like that, then it's like all right. But if it's like a two year relationship, basically, see that's the thing. I'm glad you mentioned that, Drew, because at first I was like, it's water on the bridge. You took an L. You gotta hold it. As, as, as she was as, invested though. Yeah, that's two two years of your life. Yeah, but you put people on the back burner, people you could talk to. And you thinking you're building something with this person, and all of a sudden it's like they ghost you, and you on Instagram, you see they married. Yeah, wow, bro. It so is I wild. think she's well within her right to tell the wife, like, hey, 
for sure. But I mean, what do you, you you fuck with my life? I'm gonna fuck with your life now. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what do you gain out of that, though? What do you gain out of that? I don't. I don't think it's like really. What are you gaining out of that by telling your the uh, person's significant other? You know, what I'm saying of what happened. I don't. I don't necessarily think it's about gaining anything. It's about. I think it's about just letting her know like this was going on. Maybe it's maybe it's just looking out for other other women. Like you don't want this to happen to this happen to you. You don't want to happen to someone else. Maybe it's that type of thing. And I'll be real with but, you, dog. If, if from the woman's perspective, if I found out, I would want to find out if my wife that I married was talking to a dude in a relationship with a dude before we met or during while while we were dating and then she ended up marrying me and ghosting the guy like for me i, I don't want to know that because it doesn't it it does have like drew said it doesn't have any positive impact it can only bring negativity to our relationship so she could just right. ghost that guy she made a decision to marry me she don't want to be with him no more and that could be that but once you find that out that's when, like, the trust issues might try to seep in. Like, okay, you, I know you weren't married at the time, but we were exclusive, and you were still messing with someone, some other dude. Right. I mean, I just think that, I don't know. I think, it, like I said, for me, I don't necessarily think the person would gain anything from it, and I understand the portion of, you know, being hurt from it because you invested time into that person. But I just think that, you know what I'm saying, once you do that, you start creating ha- chaos and havoc for other people's lives, even though, you know what I'm saying? Someone said that. karma. Yeah, I mean, they, they would say it's karma, but also at the end of the day, like, you are single. Like, if you're not married, you are single. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You have the... I, I mean, I get it. I understand. But at the end of the day, like, you have the right to do whatever it is that you want to do. I'm not saying it's correct, but I'm saying I do know people who operate in that way of life. But and I would think in that case, you would, you and whoever you're dating would, would know, like, hey, this is not exclusive or is it? Like, I feel like you would have to have that talk. Yeah. Even though, you know, you're not married, I feel like you would have, you would eventually have the talk like we're exclusive at this point. That's real because, I mean, obviously we've seen and we know individuals who talk to, to talk to other people for two years, but they've been off and on. So yeah. it could, it could have been a situation like that where they could have been off and on, but she just, you know, she caught feelings, you know what I'm saying? Whether, you know, saying their situation was stable or not. And he got decided to go get married and, you know what I'm saying? She's still stuck in her feelings. Do, you, do y'all think that everything that, that's done in dark will ultimately come to light? Or is there some things that you just take to the grave with you and it'll it'll never be? I, I believe there's a lot of things that cause people say, oh, yeah, whatever's done in the, in the dark come to light. I don't believe that, though. I think people like take secrets to their grave. Absolutely. I just think it depends on an individual. I think some people are able yeah. to live to live with stuff on their conscience and some people aren't. And I think some people just live with that guilt so long that they have to eventually confess and tell you, you know what I'm saying, certain things that, you know what I'm saying, that happen over the course of, you know what I'm saying, your relationship. And there's some there's some people who, you know what I'm saying, who compartmentalize it. And yeah. like I said, from the dating aspect, where they don't, where they're not in a marriage or whatever, like that, it's like, well, shit, it happened and we won't marry, so I ain't gonna tell them. You feel uh, me? I don't know if it was one of Drew's home, I don't think it was one of Drew's homeboys. It was a dude that we knew. And he said his friend says that, if he go out of town, it's not cheating. It's, it's like a certain mile radius. And that's how he compartmentalizes, it, dog. I'm like, that's some wild shit, dog. It's like, it's, it's not cheating. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna, I'm if I go out of town, it's not cheating. If it's out of state, it's not cheating. <laughs> Was that one of your boys? Someone said that, dog. Bro, it sounds like it sounds like it might, may have been. Brando and shit. It might, because it Brando might, I think, because I know. Another one of another one of boys said, "If you had if you had sex with her previously, it's not cheating either because you already did." <laughs> that, that was it. that was it right there. That, that was it right there. That was it actually. That was the one. Because <laughs> you already had it before, so it's not I'm like yo, really. He's like, I've I've already done it before. <laughs> hey boys, hey boys, be stretching the line, boy. I swear, boy, they really do. <laughs> I'm trying to say, dog, is make themselves feel better about the situation. And they know if they want to do that to them, they be torn to pieces. They really yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, but it's a it's a two way street, though. It's a two way street. You know what I'm saying? Guys fuck up, women fuck up. It's just a part of the game, unfortunately. Damn, bro. What what else y'all got for us? Dog, I do. 
I gotta talk to y'all about this this like phenomenon that's been happening in the NBA, dog. About the fans OD. Yeah. See, yeah. Like from for me, I get it. I th- for one, I think the fans are just excited to be back in the arena. Like it's kind of like a cabin fever type of thing. Like they finally, they finally back. And now they just don't know how to, they don't know what to do. Like they just going crazy. Another part of it is just diehard fans. Like we we know there's always it's always been like that. Like people hated Jordan. Yeah. Knicks fans hated Jordan. Like it just this has always happened with the stars in the NBA. The fans don't like you if you play for a rival team. That's just how it is. For me, the whole throwing the popcorn thing on like I think that's hilarious. Throwing popcorn on the uh, throwing a bucket of popcorn on Westbrook is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like he was, tight. he was tight, bro. Watching that game, I mean, he was tight when the they reaction. The, the reaction made it even funnier. Like he OD'd, like it was some popcorn. Just keep no, you, but you should have seen what, like I said, you should have seen what happened prior to that happening. He 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 was leaving the game because he hurt his ankle. But yeah. when the popcorn was thrown on him, that well, nothing wrong with that boy's ankle. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that, for me. That's hilarious. Like it's 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 harmless. It's popcorn. But like the dude that spit on Trey Young, like that's. That's crossing wild. the line. Oh, so I, I didn't see that. Like I saw um Derrick Rose like react like this. I thought it was like yeah, they like Derrick slowed the Rose. tape down, like yeah. See, but that, that's yeah, like uh, that's thing like that's that's, that's OD and disrespectful. Like that's OD disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the most to me, that's the most disrespectful thing that you can do to another grown man is spit on him. That's one. And number two, an uh, open ass slap. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Don't 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 little boy me like like I'm your child. Don't slap me, bro. <laughs> but see, I think, it. but I mean, I, I do agree with you know Russ about how the NBA, you know, what I'm saying doesn't hold fans accountable. Because I mean, like, yeah, they get you know, what I'm saying a permanent. But what if Russ w- would have actually reacted see, in, a, in a way where you know, what I'm saying typical. I mean, um, similar to what happened in Auburn or the Palace. You know what I'm saying with uh, Detroit and Indiana. Like what? Ha- what would have happened? You know, what I'm would he have been in the wrong? Yeah. That, that you know what I'm saying? Would like, Trey Young have been in the wrong if he would have went into the stands and and, and slapped the shit out of or punched him or whatever whatever it is? Like you know what I'm saying? Like so I think I think these fans, you know what I'm saying, they got chill out because obviously this is not an isolated incident. This has been happening, and not only yeah, that, yeah. I've, been, I've looked in the news and I saw something along the um, along the lines like I guess apparently airline. Uh, since have been going up as well, like similar to like what's been going on in the NBA, like a a, a a flight attendant got two of her teeth knocked out the other day on Southwest. That's wild. Hey, and it's like, bro, what's going on? Like, you know, what I'm saying, well, people where they like they can just do anything, bro. Hey, pe- people have been in the house for so long, so when they finally get yeah. out, they don't know how to act, bro. I thought it was gonna be the opposite. I thought when people came outside, they'll be more timid and not used to the social interaction. But these people are like. Kind of like that dog that's been locked away, and you finally free that dog. Yeah, yeah. In that cage all day, that's going crazy. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're animals, though, dog. I mean, like I said, people people are animals. You know what I'm saying? Like you like y'all said, I think what happened is like when they when the CDC announced you know to lift the mandate of having masks and stuff like that, people just started going crazy because this is the yeah. this is our first our first time of having freedom in what almost a year and a half, almost two years, right? At this point, so it's just like. Yeah, it's great to have to see the NBA having fans back in the stands, but you know what I'm saying? Like have have a little bit of respect. Like show 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 people respect, you know what I'm saying? Because the NBA didn't have to do that. The NBA could have still, you know what I'm saying, had no fans at the games. And, and yeah. here's the thing, the fan that threw the popcorn at Russ tried to sue him for a hundred million dollars. And the judge No, that, that was that was actually the other that was actually the other previous fans when he got into the situation two years ago in Utah. Oh, really? Yeah. So okay. when the yeah, they were suing him for uh defamation. When the Utah fans had supposedly called him a a, a racist r- a remark, but here's the thing though, and I feel like kind of like to Kyrie's point, a lot of this stuff has racial undertones. So you know the climate oh, that we're in now. So I think a lot of these fans, they see. Remember how in the bubble, the players were like basically standing up for black people, Black yeah. Lives Matter, this that a third. I feel like a lot of these fans had that tension. Like, okay, I'm gonna put you in your place. I'm, I'm gonna show you what it is. And they might not drop the N words, but it's the undertone of the word. I, I, but I feel like it, it, I feel like it's more so just a fan hating a, a rival player more than a racial t- more than a racist issue to me. And in, in, in Boston, I'm rolling with Jarvis. And oh, Boston, yeah. I, think, I, mean, I think there's definitely racial undertone. I mean, I feel like there's situations for both. If I saw Kawhi Leonard 
and I could throw a bag of popcorn on him. I <laughs> so, I, I'm black and he's black. I just know that if I if I had the opportunity to throw anything on that man, I'm throwing something on him. Really? If I'm in the stand, what? He won you a championship, bro. Yeah, you're a Dean. You're not you're not being grateful, dog. Take that championship away. <laughs> I don't. We got others. I don't care. So it, it, it's it's Kawhi. Let's be. Don't be biased. Is Kawhi does is he deserving have his number retired as a Spurs? Hell no. No way. No, I'm with Drew on that. I'm with Drew on that. He wasn't, he didn't he, do he wasn't there long. Yeah, he wasn't there long enough. But he, 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 he didn't made do an enough, dog. He did make an impact. I, he, course, yeah, finals but he didn't MVP, do enough. Right? Finals yeah, MVP. finals MVP. What two chips? Yeah, two chips. He didn't do enough. And he was the best player. No, he only got one. No, he got two. One with us. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, one. Yeah, one with y'all. And he oh was yeah, the best yeah. Player on well, he went. He went to two. Team. He went to two NBA finals with y'all though. Yeah, but he only. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he got two rings on that team. With us. He was the best. If if there's no Kawhi Leonard, Timmy D doesn't have five rings. He has four. You're right. But guess what? I'll take four. I don't care about. Listen, the what he did to our franchise, dog. It, it, it's not spoken about it enough. People want to blame the doctors and all this, saying we handled it wrong. No. He went through the process like every other player on the team. The doctors looked him over. You're good to go. He sat out 70 games for a bruised thigh. That's what happened. He was diagnosed with a bruised thigh. He wanted to get out, dog. He was getting tired of boring. Exactly. It was, it, and I blame his uncle. When his uncle got in the picture, everything went to shit. He should have just kept quiet like he always does. He doesn't talk anyway. So just keep quiet, play the game. That's all you want to do. Shut up and dribble, yeah. Drew. You want to shut up and dribble, dog? Shut up. Exactly. <laughs> That's all he he did it in the first place. He did it himself. But that, hey, but you know, uh, speaking of the shut up and dribble thing, and I know it's it's gonna we're going back to LeBron. LeBron did piss me off. I'm I'm rolling with Brandon on this one, dog. <laughs> dog, yeah. No, LeBron really be pissing me off, dog. Because oh, LeBron's the, the like, foul? oh no, uh, well not only with the foul, <laughs> when he flopped, <laughs> when he flopped. <laughs> Yeah, and then he went and <laughs> the, the scuffle. He went in front of the fans and figured yeah. out, try to act like something's wrong with him. But and then, then he, he goes. And he and hit the he game tweet. winner. Talk about the. He, no, Go my ahead. bad. My bad. Cut you off. Oh, but when, when he, it, he hit the game winner, he talked about I was seeing triple. I had the I dog. Shut up. Just that's shut up. I, I was aimed for the one in the middle. That's yeah, he tried to add sauce to it. Like, but then, it was a great shot. But then not only that, when he tweeted, he was like. The fan only shouldn't be susp- or uh, suspended indefinitely in Philadelphia. We need to see who it is. LeBron, you're not going to do shit anyway. <laughs> Shut up. You're not going to do shit. You're the face of the league. You're not doing anything. Shut up. What's Shut the point up, of you? LeBron. Exactly. You're not going to do anything. You're acting like if you see him in person, you're going to do something. LeBron, you're not going to do anything. He might, you're not going to risk that's millions in endorsement. Though, dog. That's a big Le- dude, though. LeBron is not going to risk million dollars. Uh, I mean, millions of endorsements, million dollar do- endorsement deals, Just and, and, and his reputation and his reputation because a fan threw some popcorn on a player that's not even on his fucking team. He's not going to do that, <laughs> and it wasn't him. LeBron's not doing that. So yes, LeBron, I, I understand that you want to support the players, but please shut up. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that's your man's though. That is my man's. I love LeBron, but on this one, he needs to shut up. Bruh. I, I know. <laughs> Talking to Brando, dog. Brando said, let him in, Jarvis. The pie's over, dog. Yeah. <laughs> we're about to, <laughs> we're about to end. For? He so, said he been... <laughs> be on the what you been on section. We're going to get Brando in for the what you been on? Nah, this is the, this is the second week somebody's in breach of their contract. Jarvis <laughs> last week. Brando this week. <laughs> hey, man. Yo, your boy's Brando, in breach of your contract, dog. Shout out to Brando, dog. But, um, yeah. It's, it's time for what you've been on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What else? Ah! I don't know what else to say, dog. No, nah, is he really there? Yeah. Did you let him in? No. No, <laughs> just let him in. <laughs> nah. No, no, don't, don't let him in. Don't let him in. I mean, nah, what about just let him. Just, I'm just letting him in. All right, we let him in on what you, on what you because because the because the Blazers game is about to start for yeah. Jarvis. Yeah. <laughs> hey yo, yo, look at him, yo, yo, look at him, yo. What? No, to the viewers, this is what we deal with. I'm just yep. like this is a this is a behind the scenes look 
This is what we deal with, viewers. Are you trying to music? How you set a volume up? <laughs> it don't matter because we don't know what you've been on section, boy. You're gonna be here long anyway. <laughs> uh huh. All right. I'll I'll start us off, dog, with the what you've been on. As you know, I was in you know Hawaii. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our for, to our viewership, I'm sorry, but um, I've been on these playoffs. I think this is honestly. Um, I'm a Blazers fan, right? So, game two showed me why it basically proves people's point like Dame is wasting his good years with Portland. Like, this dude dropped 40 plus points in a playoff game, and we got blown out by like 20 something. We'll gladly so, take him in Philadelphia. We'll gladly take him. So, I, I think this year, this playoff run for the Blazers will be very important to show um, what the future holds with Dame. Well, he already he didn't he sign an extension last summer. Yeah, he's locked yeah, in. Y'all got y'all got him I, locked in. I wouldn't I'm worry saying, about like, that. As far as like, if he if he can actually win in Portland, so I think it's the best team that we've had surrounding him since the Lamarcus Aldridge days. Um, so I'm I'm high high on the playoffs. Um, I listened to Brando restitution song. You know, I, I've been on I that. I can't even hear y'all, motherfuckers, man. I'm trying to turn this shit up so bad right now, man. I- I got a lot to say that. Um, my, my life is a song of the week, but I listen. I listen to a Money Man song called "We Not Lazy." That shit hit, dog. That shit hit. I'm glad Brandon can't hear me right now, too. So, <laughs> Jarrell, what you been on, dog? Oh, time out. And the shy's back on. The shy. Shout out to the shy. On shy. Oh, and it, I was on the plane. Oh, and oh, uh, oh, oh, and the. Uh, Side note, Tiger Woods, bro. So I watched the Tiger Woods doc on on the plane to Hawaii. Tiger Woods is a wild boy, dog. Like I said, he would chill out with like Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan. And like he was asking him, like, hey, how do I get girls? And Michael Jordan said, dude, just tell him you're Tiger Woods. Like, what are, what are we talking about right now, bro? <laughs> like, and that's how he found out how to get girls. It's kind of like when Uncle Terry. Taught, taught us how to get that girl. It's like, okay, now we got the battery in our back. But Tiger Woods did that at like 30 years of age. And that's when he started to OD, like cheating on his girl, just wilding out. Yeah. So uh, shout, out to, shout out to Tiger, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Tiger. <laughs> but yeah, man, NBA playoffs, man. Y'all already know the vibe. Sixers, man, Philly, we are up 2-0. Uh, you know saying? Chasing the championship. Uh, I've been watching y'all, 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 y'all gonna see them boys by this time. By, by the time this episode releases, we'll Philly uh, yeah, we play Saturday, Saturday, we play Saturday, and then we play Monday. So, yeah, we might it might be a sweep, it's a unless, sweep. It's a, unless it's a gentleman's sweep. They might win one in, in, in uh, Washington, but we'll see what happens. I don't know if, if Russ is gonna be healthy enough to play next game, but um, I'll probably do better without him, <laughs> but uh, yeah, NBA playoffs. Uh, I've been catching uh, Atlanta on FX. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a really good show. Um, Please, Jerry, you know I, I know you don't do um, edibles, but if you ever do an edible or high on some type of drug, watch Atlanta. <laughs> a good friend of mine, this? My, uh, my, one of my homeboys says he he watches Atlanta on edible. I'm not gonna put his name out there. He lives in, in the seven five area, and he says it's wild. Damn. Well, yeah, may, maybe after the military career is done. I'll go back. I'll be. I'll go, I'll go back and rewatch it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So um, and then you know what I'm saying uh, so as also as far as what you've been on, um, I attended a funeral to somebody who you know what I'm saying who's very close to the family, and uh, shout out to them. I won't release their information, but um, rest in peace to her father. Yeah, rest in peace. Um, um, if you if you're watching this episode, um, you you're in our prayers. I've been praying for you since your your dad's illness transpired, and um, since your dad transitioned, um, your family's been in my prayer. So, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as music, obviously Cole's album. Uh, and I've been actually going back and listening to some other albums. I went, uh, like I said, listen to Cole's album. Went back and listened to Jack Harlow's album. Um, I, I went and listened to Epidemic, uh, Bob Money Man. Went back and listened to that. Um, so just been catching up on a lot of music. Um, but obviously it'd be cliche for me to select a, a J. Cole track, so I'm not gonna do it. No, just y'all, do it. Not to y'all surprise. We did it like, before. 
Well, no, no, no. I, want, I want to show. I want to show other people some love. I actually want to show local guys some love. Um, somebody that I work with, but B A Hazy God Ball nah. Sixty Eight. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. So, the, so this dude uh, that I work with, name is Clifton. Um, but he he released a, a three pack called Chasing Sunset, um, and that joint is is pretty tough. Like I said, I, I enjoy you know kind of the 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 rap slash singing hybrid mix. So, um, he has his his first track is called Intro. So that joint is is tough and. You know what I'm saying that's gonna be my song for the week. J Cole's J Cole's very underrated. We have we we have to admit this after after. Well, shout out to Clifton. Ten, shout out to Clifton, man. Shout out to ten, team, ten years. It. Ten years of J Cole. He's been no overrated for the past ten years. Can we admit it? Overrated or underrated? Overrated. I've been waiting. To, I've been waiting to talk to you guys for about two weeks about this. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it next episode because you're done. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk we'll, about it. We'll, we'll talk about it next episode. Get done. You can't show up an hour late, dog. Expect us to an hour, an hour and a half late. Actually, they expect us to talk about topic right. <sighs> it's not my fault, but we. we so y'all would y'all would have blamed me for J Cole getting away with he's about to get away with. Okay, blame me, blame me, save it, blame save me. It. But we're gonna save know. It. Listen, save man. You got. Go ahead. Don't know what to tell you to my mother. <laughs> I, you can't tell me anything, but I just want. I, I want to talk about J Cole. We we'll talk about him next week. I was late. I gotta eat it. Y'all, y'all can get y'all little shit off when I was gone. I have no idea what you guys said, but I, I, I kind of believe he was on some bullshit. I can tell by everybody's faces, and I was gone. And then J Cole got away when he got away. Hey, J Cole is better than any of your favorite artists. Name better future. Than Lil Wayne. And, He's better than Lil Wayne. Better than any of your favorite artists. Name Jay future. Cole better name than Lil future Wayne you? and Money Man. Is, name future and Money Man. Is J Cole better than Lil Wayne than you? Of course not. Okay, then. but he's so, but he's better than he's better than Future and he's better than Money Man. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, yeah, no, uh, no, uh, no, uh, no, 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 no Lucky this is what we talking about when it's, when it's my turn to go, Brando. That's what it means. <laughs> it's my turn to do what you've been on. All right. I, I know I know, but, uh, I know. you're rubbing on that bullshit. I can't wait. Oh, what's it? This plot is over. No, oh, you're so lucky I got here late, Darrell. I had, ah, can, let's start all over. Can we start all over? I had a yeah, lot to will, say tonight. We will next week. We'll start right over for you. <laughs> you just wait. You just wait. Uh, but, yeah, for me um, – Recently went to the movies. It was it's a great pastime. It was a great feeling to go back. It was my first wait. time back. It does. I, oh, you still go to the it. movies? Huh? You still go to the movies? Love it. Man, that's crazy. One of my favorite things to do. Go alone. I get, I'll, I'll go alone. It doesn't matter. I, I, I have done it. I have done it. Yeah, I'm love it. But yeah, I went, went to the movies. It was a great feeling to go back. Oh, saw Wrath man. of Man. Good movie with Jason Statham. Wrath of Man. Oh, okay. Uh, good, good action flick. If you into that, you know, not much, not much to it. But if you like those type of movies, you'll enjoy it. So that was good. Um, other than that, just been, just been chilling for real. NBA playoffs, of course. You know, Spurs were in a playing game. We lost, so you know, it happens. Uh, it was like two we'll- weeks ago. <laughs> this was like two weeks ago. <laughs> yes. it really was. It really was. It, it really wasn't. But uh, yes, yeah, it was. anyway. It was one week ago. All right, man. <laughs> uh, Jarrell, I got a lot to say to Jarrell. Anyway, uh, but yeah, NBA playoffs. So excited to see what will happen with that. Uh, music wise, of course, J. Cole album, you know, already gave my thoughts on that. Um, but the best track to come out recently, maybe easily the top five tracks of the year Seeing Green, Drake, Wayne, Nikki. I shut a tear. It's so great. The, uh, on the the new Nicki track, the, the yes, I said the chair when I saw so the, I, I uh, the, the re-release of uh, yeah, um, beat me up, Scotty. Yeah, but uh, seeing Green, every one of them snapped. Wayne went crazy, but Wayne. Hey, hey before hey. On, on, on what's it? I saw something on, on Instagram where they took a dude's song. They, they the seeing Green. They, they took like, the dude's the beat. It was the beat. If I'm like, and the, dude, the, dude, the dude said seeing Green. 
in his verse. I'm like, I don't understand how they think that that's stealing, but whatever. No, I feel it was it was something like they got the beat. I forgot they stole the beat. They stole the beat. This is obviously yeah. what happened. Isn't it a sample yeah. though? I mean, it's yeah. some sample, but I don't know what. Okay. Anyway, yeah, that's my that's my song. Where's Jarrell? Brando. Yeah, you been on. Brando, been like, on Brando, like he blind. Where's Jarrell? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, like I'm not sitting right. Here. He is blind. Remember, he told us he's blind. No, I, I'm so upset. Jarrell, you got away with a lot. To, you got a Jarrell. Let me tell you something. You got away with a lot the past two weeks. I'm gonna be in your ass balls next week. You lucky I was gone. You potted without me, but I'm going. Oh, Jarrell, I have a lot to say with you. Boom. You've been very disrespectful for Little Wayne. Um, the Sixers aren't that I, good. How was I disrespectful to Little Wayne? Was it you or was it Jarvis? It wasn't. It wasn't Drew. It's between you guys. Was it Jarvis? Was it? It was, Jar- Man, it was you, Jarvis. You, you, boy? What was said? What was no, said? I'm good. Oh, I can tell you what was said. Oh, overrated for one. I never Little said Wayne, Wayne was overrated. Bad. I never said that. I said I said Wayne is in the top ten of all the time, greatest of all time. I said it last week during the pod. You did. What are you talking about? And, and and I don't like what Jarvis is doing right now. I see what Jarvis is doing right now. No, no, no. I came at you earlier, Jarrell, but it's Jarvis. Jarvis, you who my attention. <laughs> don't laugh, Drew. Jarvis, you who my attention needs to go to. You, because Jarrell's right. He didn't say that. I, I we can move on to take. No, we can run. No, 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 no. I don't want you to swim out of this. I want you to have a conversation. I want you to have a conversation, Jarvis. You just thought I was late. You thought we were going to talk about this. You thought I wasn't going to show up, but I'm here. I, no, I didn't think you were late. You were late. What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker said I thought he was late. Yeah, motherfucker, you showed up out and a half late. <laughs> what did you it. say about Little Wayne last week, Jarvis? I wasn't here last week, dude. You, so you didn't tweet? You didn't tweet. I don't tweet. Oh, uh, here we go. Semantics. Okay. Okay. You talking about, about Facebook message? Like, yeah, you're dude, Facebook listen, man, listen, man, listen, listen. What I say about no, 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 no. Don't you dare do that to me, Jarvis. Don't make me like a fool. Don't make me like a fool. What I say about Lil Wayne? Jarvis. No, you ain't like Paul off the Temptations, though, when he was drunk. Am <laughs> I drunk? Dog. No, I'm not belligerent. I'm not. No, nothing's wrong with me at you all. That scene on the temptation dog. Here we go. Dog. It was like Thanksgiving, and it, it, it played it. everybody was like, "So everybody forgets." I cannot wait. Hey, Jarvis, I want my apology in two weeks. I want my idiot, apology dog. in two weeks, like, Jarvis. Come on, get you out of here, dog. It's okay. You gotta get you out of here, bro. No, we're never getting me out of here. Because I want to talk to Jarrell. I had something to say. Then you want to get me I out of here? I didn't say anything I about Little Wayne. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I didn't say anything about Little Wayne. I said yeah, you're Little right. Wayne. And I was wrong. I was wrong for that. I, I went off on. I went off on you. And the energy should have been towards. What did I Jarvis. say about Little Wayne? <laughs> oh, I can tell you what you said. You said not a legend. One. You said you didn't say hey, that. I'm crazy. <laughs> no, I'm crazy. I'm no, crazy. I said that's. I said that's crazy. You think I would say Little Wayne's not a legend? You said, no, said everything that? that happened last week. All of y'all ignored it, and this is what I don't like. Jarvis, no, Brando, he said that. Week. Brando, did he really say that? To be to be quite honest, to be quite honest, Jarvis and Jarrell said it last week. What? <laughs> and put a tape back. I'm not tripping. All right. No, I'm okay. not tripping. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, hey, that's so Drew. lucky. That's so Drew. lucky I wasn't here. What you been Jarvis on? Is... What you been on, dog? What you um, oh, I've been on Brando. Oh. Oh. What a... <laughs> oh, y'all are so lucky. I had a... I had a op, I had the I had the um fucking iPad plan for you guys. I had the everybody what I've been on, motherfuckers been coming at me. Um baby mothers. Um we have been in a whole bunch of war. Um Jarvis has been talking shit about Wayne. Jarrell has been talking shit about Wayne. Me and Drew have been on the right side of history. This is what's going on. We're gonna talk about this next week. We're gonna Drew, when did I talk to Wayne? Drew, let it go. Uh, it never happened. Yes, it did. No, y'all not gonna make me feel stupid. No joke. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, look, man. That's, hey, look, man. That's when the Lord knows you're lying, brother. <laughs> that's when the Lord knows you're lying, brother. <laughs> Keep lying on our name like that, bro. The Lord took you out. 
I'm mean, gonna miss everybody. I'm gonna miss everybody. <laughs> he disappeared like this Bone Thugs video, dog. Just... Hey, dog. hey, Brando's different. He's different, man. Hey, with the at work, <laughs> off work. This is a wild episode, but we appreciate it, all right? <laughs>